1968, Shakespeare told the brave black watch, heaven smiles upon the Irish, but gives the money to the Scots. See that girl at John the corner, she is rich as you can guess. Once upon a time she'd nothing, now that girl's got twice as less, and though she suffers with good health, pity her in all her wealth. She was happier when she was poor, though for years she'd the wolf at the door. But the wolf got inside once, and what did she do? She just threw him out and said, get in the queue. Now she lives in a mansion in Scunthorpe, and her six double chins reach the floor. She's got a red nose, cause too freely she's whined. Through eating too much, there's a load on her mind. There's a searchlight in front and a pillion behind. She was happier when she was born. She was once a village maiden, down in all the shot, it's true. When the soldier spoke, she'd answer, thank you and the same to you. <laughs> have they made her what she isn't? We have got to face this fact. She was once a fashion plate, but now her cup and saucer's cracked. Now so wealthy she has got, all her crockery's gone to pot. She was happier when she was poor, when she only weighed seven stone four. Now she's 18 stone six and as fat as can be, where the mountains are more and roll down to the sea. Each day in the large beauty parlor, they iron out her wrinkles galore. They pummel and punch to get rid of her fat. They pummel so much that her spare tire's gone flat. And her backfiring nostrils now blows off her hat. She was happier when she was poor. She was happier when she was poor. In a cottage on Old Hill Climore. She lived in a room that was just four by two. Her left leg in bed and her right up the flue. She slept in a bell-bottom nightdress. Now she's got silk pajamas galore. She's got a swell suit trimmed with butterflies bright. She wore them one night, but her husband got tight. And the rascal went butterfly catching all night. <laughs> she was happier when she was <laughs> That's all there is of that one. <clears throat> what do you mean it's quite enough? <clears throat> so listen, soaks, the folks. <clears throat> This program comes to you tonight by the courtesy of Mr. Ernest Shortpole. A long staff, long staff. <laughs> One of the best dressed men in Brownlow Hill Workhouse. <laughs> very, very thrifty. In fact, he's got the first shilling he borrowed. He always lives up to the motto of the old regiment. Rude boo Jew, suck another Jew <laughs> Of course, I shouldn't be here tonight. I'm deputizing. I'm deputizing for old Mother Riley, who is indisposed. I don't know what's the matter with her, but I heard the children outside singing about she fell in the fire and burnt her bonnet. <laughs> but I'm not feeling very well myself. I've been suffering with the gathering of the clan. I went up to the hospital the other day. The doctor was very, very busy on a big case. There were only two bottles left. <laughs> One of the doctors took my temperature, another one took my wristwatch. <laughs> he found there was something wrong with my heart. He said, if you had trouble with angina pectoris, I said, I've had a lot of trouble with her, but you haven't got the name right. <laughs> I've had trouble with her ever since the day I married her. Of course, I walked into that wedding with both my eyes shut. Her brother shut one and her father shut the other. <laughs> The doctor said I was getting too fat, I must get out more. So I bought a second-hand car. And I got out quite a lot. <laughs> I got out 12 times in the first mile. 
I lost a lot of flesh the last time I got out. I got out through the windscreen. <laughs> My wife's a very good driver too, but the car's too tight for her. It's only a five-seater. <laughs> she hangs over the side and looks like mud guard. <laughs> What she knows about driving would fill a library. What she doesn't know would fill a hospital. <laughs> Read for Ralph the other day just because she ran over a man's pipe. I think it was his windpipe. <laughs> <laughs> a policeman came up and said she was doing 65 miles an hour. He said, impossible, I've only been out 20 minutes. <laughs> He said, another thing, this is a one-way street. He said, okay, I'm only going one way. <laughs> and the policeman arrested me. Mind you, apologize, he didn't want to arrest me. He had already got three fellas in the clink and they wanted a game of solo. <laughs> <laughs> the other day, <coughs> I was out in our garden breathing on the currant bushes to poison the earwigs. <laughs> when the gentleman next door attracted my attention with a piece of loose wall, <laughs> and I watched him dig it. He dug once and he found a sixpence. Dug again and found a shilling. Dug again and found a two shilling piece. Then he dug again and found a hole in his trousers pocket. <laughs> All right, but try something more difficult now. A little dramatic poem written by Adolf Hitler. Entitled, I had the world at my feet when my foot slipped. <laughs> There's a one-eyed yellow idol to the north of Katmandu. There's a little marble cross beneath the town. There's a broken-hearted woman tends the grave of Mad Carew. And the little god forever gazes down. He was known as Fat Carew in the pubs round Waterloo. And he wore a green tie with a diamond pin. He was worshipped in the ranks by the cabmen and the swanks. And the coalman's daughter loved his double chin. He had loved her all along. And despite his ong bong pong, the fact that she loved him, they say, was right. So her complexion was a fake, and her teeth were put and take. <laughs> put in by day and taken out by night. It was the 15th anniversary of her 22nd year. <laughs> so he smiled at her as sweetly as a hawk, and asked what present she would like, and jestingly she said, your green tie for my little yellow dog. <laughs> Pat Carew seemed in a trance, and his heart slipped through his pants. <laughs> but he tried his utmost not to look erect. He handed her the tie and kissed her hand goodbye. And when he bowed his head, she bit his neck. <laughs> Later on, Carew came too, his tie had gone its true. And his tie pin with it, he seemed in a fog. He rushed like mad to find that she tied that tie behind to the tailpiece of her little yellow dog. She was screaming like a child and the dog was running wild, fighting policemen as he galloped up the street. For the little dog called Tom, when he wagged his to and from, felt the typing urge him on to meet his fate. <laughs> the dog returned at dawn with his windscreen slightly torn and unseen took something from the lady's room. To another room he flew saying, that's for Pat Carew and silently he slunk out in the gloom. When Carew jumped into bed, he'd have wakened up the dead with a scream he gave as he fell like a log. Her false teeth, they were buried in the seat of Fat Carew. Was the vengeance of that little yellow dog. <laughs> There's a cockeyed yellow poodle to the north of Gongapoot. There's a little hot cross bun that's turning green. There's a double-jointed wop-wop doing tricks and who flung up. And you're a better man than I am, Gongadoot. Thank <laughs> you.